If this sounds like you, please watch this video. You are a highly intellectual individual who wants to improve their life in any sort of area. And you started to look for options and ways to improve your life and deepen your knowledge about self-improvement, productivity, how to manage your time, how to control over your life, how to achieve more, how to be successful. And then one day you start to search how to be more productive, how to be more efficient. And you find yourself digging into the self-improvement self-development kind of a niche after a bit of time and after a bit of time of research you see that there's so many contents out there like books podcasts maybe articles some interviews with very successful people about life and improving yourself these are the facts you start to consume them and the tips that they gave really make sense for you and after a bit of consuming those type of media you learn the basics of productivity such as eating the frog two minute rule breaking down the bigger project into smaller tasks motivating speeches and so many ways to cure procrastination and when you think about them they really all do make sense for example mark twain quote if it's your job to eat a frog it's best to do it first thing in the morning and if it's your job to eat two frogs it's best to eat the biggest one first so it basically implies that the hardest task should be your first task of the day and after you accomplish that the other tasks are much easier than that and since you know that it will be much easier for you to accomplish every task you have and have a productive day when you think about it it really makes sense because once you accomplish the very hard task all of them are much easier than that, so you should be able to do them, right? But for some reason, all of the things and tips that you have heard that made sense in your head doesn't really apply in real life for some reason. But when you search online, when you read about Reddit maybe discussions, it seems to work for everyone, but not you. You try to understand the reason why it doesn't work for you, so you think maybe this method doesn't really work for me, so let me try another method. And then you try another method, but it also doesn't work for you. So you start to think, maybe the problem is not the method. The problem is me who can't apply them in real life. After multiple times of trying and failing, you start to blame yourself because other than you, it works for everyone. And if the methods are coming from a very successful people, then the method itself should be solid, right? With the time, you kind of lose motivation towards productivity and you kind of believe that maybe productivity and self-improvement is just not for you. It's for people who can achieve their goals. It's for people who can keep the promises that they gave for themselves. And you're not that kind of a person. You just even keep a promise to yourself. So how are you supposed to be successful, right? But actually, that is not the truth. Of course, there can be a various reasons why those productivity methods aren't applying for you. But one thing I've realized in most of adults that are struggling with productivity after trying multiple methods and failing for unknown reason can be ADHD. The reality is that ADHD in the adults usually remains undiagnosed. In 50% to 66% of cases, the symptoms of ADHD may continue from childhood to adulthood. Yet, many adults with ADHD doesn't receive a diagnosis. So estimated prevalence in the US is about 4.4% of the adults, which makes about 10 million people around there. And also, the problem with adult ADHD is that because you didn't get diagnosed in your childhood, most of the people don't even question their ADHD. And one study estimated that 40% of the adults met criteria of ADHD have a lower quality of life and generally struggling with productivity in some areas of work. In order to understand whether you have ADHD, you can check out some protocols about DSM-5 like how to diagnose ADHD and if most of the symptoms are applying for you, I highly recommend you to check a professional and get a check about it because ADHD can affect every area of your life. Let's talk about the problems in productivity world that doesn't apply for ADHD. So when it comes to the neurotypicals, so people without ADHD and people with ADHD, the way that ADHD brain works is really different from neurotypicals. And when you look on YouTube and when you read about other productivity 
sources, most of people talk about neurotypical brains, so people without an ADHD. So if you have an ADHD, of course those tips will not apply for you because your brain simply works different. It's not because you're less than them or if you have problems, it's just simply your brain works in a different way. And ADHD is not necessarily always a bad thing. If you have a creative job or if you are able to have your freedom, ADHD brain can actually make wonders. So maybe the typical nine to five job sitting in front of a desk might not be the best choice for you, but there are of course some areas that you can shine as an ADHD person. But about them, we can talk about in a different video. So let's talk about the differences between a neurotypical brain and ADHD brain. When it comes to the productivity world, there are three major flaws in common productivity. So those three are motivation, distraction, and overwhelm. So let's talk about the motivation factor. When it comes to the neurotypicals, people without an ADHD, they get motivated by importance, consequences, and rewards. So when they have a deadline, when they know something is important for them, neurotypicals get motivated by that. But when it comes to ADHD people, it is not the case. You know that you need to fill tax documents, and you know they're important. So neurotypicals get done their tax documents before the due date, because they know the importance of it. But when you have an ADHD brain, it struggles understanding the importance of tasks. An ADHD brain often struggles with prioritizing. So when you have a bunch of tasks in your table, ADHD brain gets easily confused and it starts to prioritize the tasks that are not even priority for you. Even though you know which ones are important for you, you kind of find yourself doing unnecessary tasks that are not even priority in your life. When it comes to the best example can be the eat the frog productivity method. So when you do the hardest part, the most priority task in your day, in the beginning of your day, the rest of the tasks, you shouldn't be worried much about them. So with ADHD, even though you know that the frog is there, you stare at the frog for hours, but you wonder why you don't even eat the frog. You know that you need to eat it, but you don't do it simply and you start to blame yourself and you start to question yourself. And that frog remains till tomorrow. And when it tomorrow comes, you do the same thing over and over again until it becomes a problem. Let's talk about the other productivity tip, breaking down a big project into all of its smaller steps. So you break down big project into smaller achievable steps, but then because you are bad at estimating how much time it takes actually to do one task and understand how to prioritize those small tasks, you start to get really overwhelmed by it. So you start to think like, oh, maybe I should check Twitter. Maybe someone replied me on DM. Oh, I should maybe check this documentary on this side. And you find yourself browsing on a very unrelated topic about hours and hours. And you say, oh, maybe I should do those small tasks tomorrow. And then you delay. All of these productivity methods should work perfectly and they all make sense. But for some reason, you don't eat the frog. And even though you break down the bigger project into smaller steps, you don't do them. And if you don't do them, those methods don't work. So you question yourself, why am I not even doing them? I know that I need to eat the frog and I know I need to accomplish those smaller steps. But the problem is because AHD brains are motivated by four C's and they are captivate, create, compete, and complete. So captivate is when something captivates your interest. So when it's something new and when it's something interesting for you, your ADHD brain get motivated by doing something new. So ADHD people are often really into new stuff, trying new things, even though it can be a same work, you're really keen to trying something new and doing it in a very different way. One thing I would like my fellow ADHD people to try is morning break. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter service delivered from Monday to Friday and it gets you speed in business, finance and tech in just five minutes. The great thing about Morning Brew is that it is so captivating and it is so different from the traditional media which is usually tends to be a bit more dry and irrelevant. In traditional media you are bombarded with unnecessary information where your focus is everywhere because ADHD brain just cannot simply tolerate that. But with Morning Brew you will only learn about the key points about business, tech and finance which your focus can be remained the same while learning the things that you should probably should care about if you're interested in those topics. I want to stay in touch with the world, but I don't want to be bombarded with irrelevant information because in that case, my 
brain goes everywhere and I lose my focus easily. It's completely free and you will lose nothing by signing up. So I will have a link down in the description below if you're interested, just check it out. And let's get back into the video. So when you are working in a project, you need to try different productivity methods as long as they're working. And then the second C is create. The one thing good about ADHD brain is that it is really creative. Since it is really keen to new things and it is really creative, you like creating and creative things excites you. So when you try a new pattern that you have never tried before, you are curious about the outcome. So your ADHD brain gets motivated. The other C is compete. ADHD people love a great competition and the competition motivates ADHD brain. And then the last C is complete. So even though you know that you need to finish the task that day, you don't finish it. But suddenly when you have a day or less, you get really concentrated and you give all of your power into that task and you finish faster than everyone else. It's because you have ADHD and ADHD works pretty well with due date, especially if it gets closer. When you have a very limited time, your ADHD brain fully concentrates and you sort of gain the power of finishing the task faster than anyone else else. You wish that if you could do this a week before so that you will have a peaceful mind during the week. However, for some reason, it doesn't get activated a week before. It just only gets activated when the due date is actually really close. So when we generally summarize, when it comes to ADHD, the motivation comes from the momentum because ADHD people usually struggle with starting, not continuing. So there are some people struggling with starting the task and when you start the task, you build the momentum and you just keep going. But with other people, maybe you can like try out, but you can keep your concentration. The HD is fall into the first group. So when you find a way to start for your brain, your ADHD will keep continue doing it. So whenever you are struggling with starting a one task, you need to pick one of the four C's. Captivate, create, complete, and compete. When you pick one of those four C's and when you use one of the ways to create the momentum, you will be much likely to finish the task you have. So there are some couple of strategies that I have learned from a channel called ADHD Jesse. This whole video is inspired by his videos. I actually, if there was a way that I could share his video on my platform, I would do that. But since YouTube isn't allowing it, I'm just gonna tell the things that he's been telling in his videos, but you should definitely check out his video after my video or just stop this video and watch his video. Okay, one thing that really resonated with me from his video is that the thing he said. None of these are going to work for everyone and even the ones that work for you, they're not going to work every time. Take these and try them out and if they work, use it while it works and if it doesn't, put it down for a while and try a different method. I think this mindset is very nice because oftentimes when you find a productivity method, you get so invested in it that you think that it's gonna change your whole life throughout your life. But the reality with ADHD brain is that after a bit of time, the method doesn't really start to work anymore because your brain, your ADHD brain likes new things and it doesn't like monotone strategies in your life. You need to try new things out. You need to constantly change it. I know it is tiring and I know it is a bit difficult than the others, but you need to learn how to work with your brain because you can't erase your ADHD. So you need to learn how to work with it and how to live with it. So the first strategy is embracing the pivot, embracing the change, appreciating it. Knowing that you will change your productivity method at some point is a very freeing method in my opinion. So another tip that can really apply to ADHD people is changing your environment. This is actually something that I used to do when I was in high school because when I'm studying in my room, even though I have literally the perfect desk set up, I couldn't really concentrate at some point because I really started to get bored of my room and everything in my room kind of distracted me for some reason. So I was actually going to different cafes to study and work and, you know, focus basically that aren't that loud and that wouldn't distract me that much. So new places were giving me motivation. And even though a week later, let's say for a week, I was studying in various cafes and just like trying in new places out. And after a week, when I come back to my room, actually I could really focus in my room, even though it really distracted me a week ago. So having multiple places that 
that you do study and work is really good for ADHD brain. Another thing that you should consider when it comes to the strategies is using time-based goals. So I've actually seen a couple of videos saying how time-based goals are not good and you should set non-time-based goals. So for example, outcome-based goals. For example, let's say you want to learn a language, okay? So the neurotypicals get really motivated by it because when they finish the chapter five, no matter how long it takes, 30 minutes, an hour, let's say they plan an hour in their calendar for chapter five. And if they finish it in 30 minutes, how lucky they are, they have 30 minutes free time. But when it comes to ADHD, let's say you plan an hour for chapter five, you find yourself procrastinating all 50 minutes and trying to finish the chapter five in 10 minutes in a rush. And it is really stressing at some point. So rather than saying I'm gonna finish this in an hour, this amount of chapters, just say that I'm gonna do studying for an hour. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to finish, but I'm gonna dedicate my an hour for studying. Because when you set a clear goal of saying chapter five, you're gonna procrastinate. That is inevitable. No matter how much your self-discipline is strong, your brain will try to procrastinate. So rather than trying to set a goal, just tell yourself, I don't know how long you're able to focus, but if it's a 15 minutes, I'm gonna study language. And I don't know how much I will achieve, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Or if you want to make reading a book a habit of yours, don't say I'm gonna read 30 minutes before bed every night. Just tell yourself that you're gonna read maybe five pages a day so that it is a very easy action to start so you can build the momentum and you can continue it. If you would tell your ADHD brain that you're gonna read 30 minutes every day, I'm pretty sure that it's gonna procrastinate and not do it and just delay tomorrow. So tell yourself that you're gonna read five pages, which is a very achievable thing. And once you start to read five pages, you probably will keep continue. Even if there are days that you don't continue and end up finishing reading only five pages just happy about it the important thing is consistency we're not achieving we're not aiming for perfection we're aiming for consistency since productivity and self-improvement is a lifelong journey it is important that we continue the game that we actually show up so whenever you're trying to build a habit do micro commitments because we're not really good at committing to a bigger project so doing by micro commitments you will be able to actually achieve reading five pages running maybe for a five minutes and with the time the more you accomplish them the more confidence you gain and the more understand how your brain works Another thing that is really debatable in productivity world is the Pomodoro timers. Some people don't really like Pomodoro timers. However, for ADHD brain, Pomodoro timers actually can make wonders. Because ADHD brain really likes to due date or deadlines, Pomodoro timer creates a deadline for you. When it gives you a five minutes of break, you need to come back in five minutes, you know, or you can set up a different variation of a Pomodoro method, maybe 30 minutes studying and then 15 minutes rest, maybe, I don't know. But after 15 minutes, once you get the notification of a timer and once the 30 minutes of study session starts once again, it creates a, some sort of a deadline illusion that you need to do immediately so this is actually really important so when you have a ponder timer it creates a deadline effect which our adhd brain likes so mix and try with different pomodoro techniques like 50 10 30 15 45 15 whatever and try to find the one that works for you right now another thing that adhd jesse recommends is that making it a game because adhd brain loves competing but when you're competing with others constantly it can really turn into something toxic so if you want to compete with someone in a healthy way that someone should be us ourselves our past selves let's say you finished one chapter yesterday in 30 minutes so you try to aim today to finish it in 25 minutes and let's see if you can achieve it so you try to be more productive and you try to compete with yourself it can be gym or it can be anything you track your process and you try to aim for one percent better maybe that day since you're trying to constantly improve and you're trying to constantly compete with yourself it kind of turns into a game and rather than the task itself your main focus is shifting to can i do better this time and if you couldn't there is no need to be disappointed by yourself because at least you show up and there's tomorrow waiting for you so no need to give up and struggling 
failing is really normal with ADHD brain. The only important thing is showing up, constantly trying and aiming for the 1% improvement each day. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you ADHD Jesse for amazing content that he created because it literally saved my life, saved me from self-blaming myself and I thought it can be really helpful for everyone. I will link his video down in the description below so you can also check him out and he is currently writing a book about ADHD. You can join the waiting list from the link in the down in the description below because I believe that it's going to be a very very helpful book. So thank you guys and bye.